Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear people of God, think about the last time you were standing in line at a restaurant for 45 minutes waiting for a table. Think about when you arrived and the patience you had and you ultimately wait, but you wait it out until finally you're seated. Now this is called, according to Adam Grant, who is an expert in organizational psychiatry. He teaches at the Wharton School, has written a number of blockbuster books, and his specialty is dealing with decision-making. And he calls this, when you stand in line and wait for 45 minutes, he describes that as escalation commitment. You've already sp spent your time, why give up? Even though you're frustrated and you ultimately make that decision to wait it out. Escalation commitment. Now it may be a bad decision. You could have walked away sooner, walked down the street, gone to another restaurant, probably been dining, finished eating before you ever sat down at the other place. But it's something we do. Not always intentionally, but we make bad decisions. Now, Professor Grant offers lots of advice about decision making. And the one thing he tells us, a little foresight goes a long way. And that's what we need to do. And today's gospel message is a parable that Jesus gives us. It's called the parable of the talents. And it is given to people following him the week before he is arrested and crucified. This is the end of his life. And he's talking about the second coming and the parable. Ultimate decision making. What's happening? And this is a situation where the people are hearing and we hear the word talent. Now talent is not something that we have as far as gifts and abilities. The talent used in this parable is monetary. It's a worth, it's a value. And one talent was equivalent to between 15 and 20 years of wages. It's a lot of money. Now you wanna make sure with that money you make proper decisions. And we hear about these three characters, these three slaves that the master gives them the talents. One, he gives five talents. Another, he gives two. And finally, he gives the remaining one, one, according to their abilities. Now, they've got the talents. And as we've read, we understand the one who had five doubled it. The one who had two doubled the value. And the final one is with the one talent, he buries the talent. The 15 years, 20 years of wages he buries. For the original hearers of this story, that would not be an unusual thing to do. Because if you had something valuable, obviously there would be thieves looking for what you have to steal from you. So it was understood that if you had something valuable, you would bury it and hide it. And that's exactly what this gentleman did. But was it a bad decision? According to the parable, it tends to seem to be that way, doesn't it? Back to Mr. Grant, Professor Grant, what he says about decision making. He says one of the things in order not to make a bad decision is that we should seek out opinions, objective opinions of others in what we're doing. You have a car, it's an old clunker. Seems like something's always going wrong with it. And what do you do? You bring it to the auto repair shop, you fix the carburetor, you fix the starter, and all of a sudden, you're spending too much money. If you talk to some people who know something about automotive, they may help you reach a good decision. Get a new car. Talk to others. Get advice. The banker who gives out a loan and his customer defaults. You've got a long-term relationship 
You know the personal situation. You know what they're going through. You care about them. They come to you for another loan. Out of the goodness of your heart, you want to give them the loan, even though you know they probably can't pay for it. If you seek a neutral opinion, another banker, they will probably look at it totally different and give you the good advice. Don't give another loan. Standing in that line for 45 minutes, did you talk to anybody in the vestibule who was ahead of you? How long were they told they were going to wait? Did you get that neutral opinion? Adam also tells us that we should set limits. You go to the restaurant, you wait your 45 minutes. Maybe when you arrived, you set a limit. I am not going to wait beyond 30 minutes, 15 minutes. And then you are not in that escalation going towards that bad decision. Investing money. Our friend with the one talent, he buried the money. Did he talk to others? Did he get a neutral opinion? Did he talk to his fellow slaves who were given more than he was? What was their approach? Why did they make those decisions? Maybe he could have taken, as we have in the financial word, an aggressive or a conservative approach. 15, 20 years worth of salary? Well, maybe I could have tried to invest part of it and not all of it. Our wonderful gentleman, Mr. Grant, also advises us that when we make decisions, we should think of others and what those decisions effect will have on the people surrounding the decision you will make. If you think of the approach, not just looking at yourself, what it means to you, but what the results will mean for others, you're more likely not to make a bad decision. Our one slave, did he look at the master? Did he look what he was looking for? And what decision did he make? And what about the decisions that we make regarding our faith? Because this is what this really comes down to. What is our relationship with Christ when we make our decisions? You see, Master, I buried it and did not invest it because I was afraid. He did not have a good working relationship with the Master. He was afraid. He made his decision based on that. There was no neutral decision making. He did not develop a good relationship. He did not talk to the other slaves. He did not know how generous the master would be. What is our relationship? Are we afraid of our faithfulness? Are we afraid to engage with Christ in our daily lives? Do we seek out neutral decisions from others? Do we gather together as a community of Christ, a community in one, and talk to one another and build up our mutual faith so we don't make bad decisions in our spiritual life? Do we gather around the table? Do we gather around the font? Do we gather around in fellowship with one another and praise the Lord? Do we set limits? Yes, we've set a limit here for 30 minutes for worship, but do we engage in that worship experience as we're here? Do we pray? Do we stand on that line at the restaurant for 45 minutes and contemplate and pray to the Lord and give thanks for the food that we will about to receive? Do we contemplate about all the good things we have as we move towards the day of Thanksgiving? Do we think of others? Do we think of our decisions as Christians about how we can affect the lives of one another? Do we reach out in ministry and care for the poor, the sick, those who need other things to bring them to the faith? Today, share your talents, your gifts, not your monetary values, your gifts and abilities. Make good decisions. 
Don't make bad decisions. Today, you may depart here. You may head down the street to the diner. You may be awaiting for others to get in line. Take that time. Take that time. Praise the Lord. Take that time and make the decision that you are a child of Christ and share the good news. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.